Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. This is kind of an addendum to our second episode on the MVP Scout, the Mossberg MVP Scout. Um, basically, what I did, I got home and I was really admiring how effective this uh, three power Weaver scope was on the Scout rifle, but I really wanted it lower. So, what I did was I pulled the peep sight off the rear, and since I pulled that off, I pulled the front sight off as well. Uh, and then I had some rings that mount really low. Uh, the eyepiece on this uh, just barely lets me shift it forward far enough to get the proper eye relief and yet clear the pick rail. Uh, it's uh, free floated from the pick rail. And uh, so it's really low, almost, almost as low as you can get on a pick rail with a scope. And, and you know, and almost as low as the iron sights, not quite. I may have to add about an eighth of an inch cheek riser maybe uh, although it seemed to work really good today I also when I remounted the optic it ended up moving it down about half an inch and then I was able to move it forward about about three-eighths of an inch so I got a little bit better for my turkey neck cheek weld with the optic in this and these mounts a little bit further forward now one thing I did do also I don't a friend of mine uh, Boston also known as Kenneth Royce uh, has written uh, a lot of books you should check them out but um, he always always used masking tape as a gasket between his scope rings and his scope and uh, I, I sometimes I've done that but usually I don't bother with it uh, this time I thought well I'll use this use the masking tape to get that little tiny tiny bit of extra elevation so that my uh, eyepiece will clear the the pick rail and uh, so that uh, I think it looks great like that so anyway now what we have is that the height of the center of the scope over the bore is now an inch and a half so I have to re-zero and for re-zeroing at uh, with the scope an inch and a half above the bore with 7.62 uh, to get my um, my battle sight zero that I like I'm zeroing at at uh, 18 yards and well I actually went and zeroed at 25 yards but look for my hits to be one half inch high at 25 yards and that's versus a tenth of an inch high when I zeroed it with it with the scope up about two inches above the bore something else I did was uh, I did uh, remounted the the muzzle brake. I got some uh, crush washers and some shims from uh, downrange products out of Kansas and so I was able to get that perfectly timed using those shims so real happy about that. Don't have to worry about my brake coming loose anymore. Another thing I did was I applied uh, some non skid or basically uh, skateboard tape, skateboard deck tape right here under the pistol grip. Now the reason I do that is because uh, you know if you've seen I've been shooting with the thumb over and using otherwise using kind of a normal grip around the pistol grip there this part of the buttstock. Uh, now what I really like to do is to use the tip of my fingers against that curve on the pistol grip and then that kind of takes my hand from being a kind of at an angle like this and rotates it down to where it's put not only do I get a straight pull back with my finger with the thumbs over but now I'm getting a straight horizontally pull back as well so uh, and it uh, I think it definitely helped today um, I mean you're talking you know maybe uh, a quarter of a minute angle difference now this is effective though because when I was uh, trying to earn my rifleman score the first time at Project Appleseed I was like you know just on the edge just so close to getting that 210 points and one of the instructors said mark try using the tip of your fingers that'll get your your hand shifted down just like what i said shifted down where you're pulling more straight back on that trigger and boom got the score right then and 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 really the thing is once you get the score it becomes kind of easy <laughs> uh, afterwards to get it pretty much every time now with this very low low uh, LPVO, a VLPVO, I guess you say very low power variable scope optic uh, from Weaver. This is a one, two, three power, so it's not very much power. And the sling and the PMAG, uh, this rifle weighs in, was coming in on my scale at just over eight pounds, which was a little bit heavy. Now, fortunately, I went 
to, to shove, save some weight, I went ahead and pulled these pick rails right off on the front. So that might have saved me an ounce, maybe, I don't know. And then I figure the, the siding system saved me a little bit as well. And so now I'm down to seven, seven pounds, 13.9 ounces. Oh, one other thing I did when I rated the, weighted it the first time, the heavier weight, I had my two, uh, my two, uh, snap caps they're aluminum snap caps by zoom so i had those in so kind of wasn't fair probably would have been maybe just under eight pounds or under yeah under eight pounds now according to jeff cooper the scout rifle should have a should be under uh seven you know seven pounds or lighter and it should have a 19 inch barrel this has a 16 inch barrel so i really do think that this rifle would benefit from a 19 inch barrel but a slimmer barrel something more like that fluted barrel that's on our MVP uh, Predator to get that weight down you know this rifle could definitely get could definitely do with some weight loss this rifles tapered bull or bison barrel is gorgeous I mean it's 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 uh, looks great in person I really really like admiring it I guess you'd say it's just it is it would be heavy to carry out in the field it's the difference to me a bull barrel is great for if you're shooting off the bench but if you're out in the field uh, you know actually uh, whether it's on the plains of Africa or in the Rocky Mountains looking for elk I would like a, a I would like to shave that extra you know almost a pound off of this rifle you know, I'm starting to bond with the bla this complete black look of this rifle. Uh, that'll probably change come summertime, but despite the extra weight, it looks just like maybe you don't want to go back. Although today, even though there's snow on the ground, it is already getting pretty warm just in uh, springtime sun here in Wyoming. Now what I did today is I did re-zero it at the 25-yard range with the uh, looking for that half inch high in point of impact at 25 yards so it's an 18 yard zero now i brought it down here to the 200 yard range and uh, had really good uh, success here at the 200 yard range of shooting prone shooting prone at 200 yards. Uh, my first group was uh, about four and a half inches, a little bit to the right. So I came back and made an adjustment and moved it um, back. Uh, I did three, I think it was three clicks back to the left. Uh, these are quarter minute of angle clicks. So that's about an inch and a half to the left. And uh, shot, a, fired another group and uh, was under, just under four inches. And so real happy with that, four inches at 200 yards, that's two minute of angle. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, shooting, you know, we're not shooting from the bench, we're shooting prone from the ground, shooting off a shooting mat, but uh, you know, not from a bench, and getting two minute of angle out of this rifle out to 200 yards. Uh, and that's with XM80 ball ammo. Uh, that is, freaking awesome that's amazing now if just give me a little bit longer barrel get me up my velocity up here a little bit shave that weight down and um, and let's let's look at adding some grippy stuff here because that definitely helped uh, my accuracy was definitely a little bit better today and I'm pretty sure I can attribute it to that uh, not my fingers not sl trying to slide down that uh, pistol grip it's Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.